All right, guys, welcome back. So we're looking at um, another quantum computing stock, which is IonQ. So this stock is $40.76 on Friday. That's where it closed. And this is a daily chart of this stock. So on this chart, you can see the red line, 200 day moving average. The yellow is 50 day moving average. This blue one is 20 day SMA. And then the gray one right here is five day moving average. So you can see it had a pretty good uh, uptrend right at these levels where it has never tested its 50 day moving average. And then that one day where it flushed pretty big, well, four days or so it spent there and then we had a little bit of a squeeze that uh, pretty much uh, took the stock right back above these levels. I was watching 45 as a possible area of resistance and then from there I was gonna watch 50-ish. So rejected at that 45 two days in a row and even uh, right around here. So each candle on this chart pretty much represents one day of price action. So let me get rid of these moving averages. And you can see it's been having a hard time at these levels. But at the same time, this stock trades like this. It is a, I mean, it's not gonna make you easy. I mean, the only uptrend that was pretty uh, melt up mode is right here and around like, uh, October you can see every single day it was just pushing and pushing and then uh, pretty much pull back going into earnings and then pretty big burst and after that it just seems like the some sort of an algorithm just took it over and it wasn't making it easy for anybody so if you are bullish you would get shaken out if you are bearish you would get shaken out because it's like Christmas tree right one green day pretty big uh, and then following day it just dumps and then on pullbacks same thing if you look at the uh, pops that it's having it's like a bursting like very large moves after uh, pretty much difficult uh, pullbacks there are not like smooth or consistent pullbacks look at these red candles and then look at the moves to the upside Look at these pullbacks and look at the moves to the upside. Same thing, look at these, I mean, except except for this one news day where it traded uh, to the downside, but even the following days, I mean, it didn't give you any information uh, regarding where, which way it would go. So I was watching 26 as a break below area, and that's when I made a video saying that if it cracks below this level, it can go straight down to $14 levels or so, 50 day moving average, I mean, 200 day moving average. And then look at these two, uh, three uh, moves, three, three session moves where it pretty much goes back up and then traps longs again and then moving sideways, traps a lot of uh, option traders. And you can see at the bottom, volume has declined and went back to its normal average volume days. So anytime you see the stock going back to these volumes, low volumes, you see all these shenanigans that I per personally don't prefer to trade something like this unless it's a day trading in and out. Otherwise, it's pretty hectic looking uh, like charts every single day. If you just I know it's an uptrend. If you somebody is not bothered regarding the uh, 10, 20 or 15 percent or of fluctuations every single day, you may not care, but a lot of people will be bothered by looking at the stock that just goes up one day, goes down another day, and it's just all over the place. But overall, pretty clean trade was this move right here, and then maybe right here. And then after that, it was just all these shenanigans where it pretty much maybe volatility meant that it's uh, near its top. This is where I was talking about uh, other names, RGTI and stuff. And uh, yeah, came down because of the news. <clears throat> but right here, right now, <clears throat> I'm gonna be watching, I mean, stock, since it's trading above its 50 day moving average, I mean, it is still in an uptrend. Yes, it did recover from this big flush down, but um, at the same time, I mean, I don't dive too much into fundamentals. Yeah, they have a little bit of a revenue, what, 37 million. Uh, and what matters for algos, it's are they reporting growth? Doesn't matter. Is it 1 million or 2% or 5%, whatever. Is it positive? Is it growing? Yes. Uh, and that's what you will see. I mean, if 
if any stock, any growth stock, showing you a growth, um, I mean, the fundamentals short term, uh, when there's a momentum, do not matter. For many, many names, they just don't matter. At some point, it will catch up, but you can see uh, 2021, uh, 2021, 2022, 23, uh, the percentages. That's what a lot of people look at it and uh, ultra short term again. But long term, yes, they need to get money from somewhere. And for most growth names, it's it's pretty much offering, okay? Doing an offering. But so far, by looking at this uh, dilution tracker, I'm not seeing much of a dilution from 2021, okay? So it's pretty much uh, from 192 million outstanding, it went to 216. That's not a lot, actually. So you got to keep an eye on that one on SEC filings. Uh, you got to keep an eye on their earnings reports, maybe. But I spent most of my time looking at the um, option activity and the daily uh, long call, uh, long and short uh, volumes. OK, so by looking at this uh, data where again, this is not 100 percent accurate data, we're um, going into this uh, flush down somewhere around these levels, kind of like this stock started stalling out and this was pretty much weaker rally. The rally was getting weaker and weaker. And a lot of people were shorting, um, meaning most of the uh, volume on a daily traded uh, volume, that was a short volume, meaning high of, um, okay, let's go all the way to from 7th of January, maybe up until December 24th. And you can see the percentages from the total volume that were short. And then it pretty much dropped pretty big. And after that, for the last, I want to say, okay, since January 8th, um, this number has come down, cooled down maybe by 10% or so. 10, 15%, even on Friday, only 41% of the uh, volume traded was uh, short volume. Uh, it could be uh, people who are shorting it, they lost an appetite for this, uh, or it could be just um, liquidity issue, or it could be just the volume getting lower for those people, because anytime volume has been spiking, yeah, there's a little bit of a, like three days before it was 53%. This is the highest number I'm seeing. Other than that, I mean, most of the uh, volume was long volume. So, which means, um, yeah, we'll see. I'm not interested in longing or shorting unless it picks a direction. Uh, it could be for me, yeah, in, a, in this consolidation mode, still in an uptrend. And unless it cracks above 45, I'm not interested to uh, trade it to the upside. I don't have a position in any quantum names. And then to the downside, I have set an alert below the 50 day moving average, somewhere around uh, 36, 35. If that happens, if it trades below those levels, sure, I will join uh, to the downside and trade maybe some puts all the way to $26 support levels where it bounced 26, 27, 50 ish levels if it cracks this 35, uh, 50 day SMA. So, and if you take a look at the, I was looking at the divergence on the MACD, which I uh, pay attention a lot. I switched to uh, four hour charts. I switched to uh, one hour chart just to define if there's any divergence regarding the price action and the MACD. So this was the case right here where uh, stock was trying to make higher highs while MACD was declining. It, it was negative divergence. And here, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's it's going cooler, but if you are somebody who works, uh, who looks at it ultra short term, you can see them like, after this two days of uh, price action pops, one happened on Wednesday of uh, 15th, and then another happened on 21st of January. You don't see much of a volume on this name and you can see the MACD was declining as well, which means people could be just trying to unload on any pops and maybe day traders show up 
when there's a volume like this and stock is moving but as soon as volume just leaves uh, it just does nothing you can look at the price action during a day it just I don't know it could be just that algo that trades this name uh, but I don't like trade swinging this name because I trade mainly options and um, it can just kill a lot of premium by doing these up and down shenanigans and crush the IV. Uh, look at the implied volatility. Still elevated, pretty big, implying big move. Like going into February 21st, it is implying that it can move up or down 11%, IV um, 123%. And that particular day on Friday, even put to call ratio. There's not much going on regarding people coming in betting to the upside. 53 thousand calls traded 33,000 puts traded and that's not a whole lot uh, and you can just by looking at the puts as well you can see like 50 percent of the puts that count came in they were cells uh between delta between 0 to 20 which means there are a lot of people just taking advantage of the implied volatility and selling those pulls puts and calls actually pretty much spread out it could be uh, yeah, you can see most of them are spreads, but this is very tiny volume to even uh, judge the stock's option activity. There are some bets uh, I'm seeing for January, uh, February 21st, $60 call, uh, February 21st, $60 call. These are not large orders. This is like 500, 400 contracts. And then next year, January, $60 call. Somebody bought um, for $14.00 and then $60 call again and there are a bunch of $50 calls that came in smaller sizes that are uh, for January 31st which is next week so we'll see what happens but I'm just waiting uh, for it to pick a direction whether it wants to go back above 45 or it will crack below uh, 36 35 levels until then it will be just in this range bound area for me so that's my update for ion q that's what i'm watching if you're new to the channel don't forget to like subscribe check the links below for discord and all that stuff peace